Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. Before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I would be very thankful to you. I just finished watching The Big Short, which is a 2015 financial dramedy directed by Adam McKay with a star cast. Uh, this is available on uh, Netflix Canada right now, uh, so if you want to see it, that's where you do it. And uh, it was it was fantastic. As someone who doesn't, I have zero interest in Wall Street financial issues and you know economy crisis and stuff like that and capitalism debate stuff like that this movie so as someone who doesn't find any interest in that i found this movie extremely intriguing and uh it was not boring for a single second even though it was pretty long so that's an impressive thing uh, this is obviously a movie with zero action um unless you count one little gun range se uh, scene so the fact it was a two hour 20 minute movie with no action that left me more intrigued than most action movies that's that's a mark of a good movie so basically uh this is about this is actually covering a real life uh economy collapse in the usa uh on wall street uh but they are it's, I wouldn't call it a one-for-one one true story because they are making some creative liberties for entertainment purposes, dramatic effect, uh, and also they're switching some character names for privacy, I guess, or whatever. Um, maybe so they can play with the characters and make them a little less accurate and more interesting. So, pretty much, Christian Bale, because I, I can't remember all their, their character names, so I'm just going to talk about their, I'm just going to refer to their characters as actor names in this. So Christian Bale is playing this eccentric Wall Street guy who goes to work without shoes and socks. Uh, he wears a old t-shirt, doesn't clean, you know, I highly doubt he showers. And uh, he basically goes to his professional job in the least professional manner ever. Um, but he is a secret hidden genius uh, beneath all the rock rock music and the, you know, the drum playing that he does in his office. He's actually a secret genius who uh, predicts the um, the upcoming or is is claims to is a better word to use because you you know obviously don't want to ruin the story for you or anything so he claims that the uh, the U S economy specifically the uh, house mortgage stock market area is uh, going to collapse drastically uh, in the next few years so he you know, invests several billion dollars of other investors' money, locks them out so that they can't access their funds because he's so damn confident. Uh, and he's basically putting everything on this huge bet. Uh, and some other people start to realize this same bet. So Steve Carell realizes this, Ryan Gosling realizes this, and Brad Pitt as well as his uh, two lackeys, I don't know their names, but uh, Brad Pitt is like in a trio in this. So those extra people I just mentioned also get whiff of the coming disaster. Uh, and by disaster I mean that they're going to get super rich and the everyone else is going to get super poor and lose their jobs and houses and everything. So the rich men are going to get even richer and the poor people are going to get even more poor basically. Uh, so they, they predict this is coming and they all start to do this, these uh, investments in preparation for this collapse. Um, and uh, everyone, all their coworkers and friends think they're crazy loony bins. So whenever they say, hey, can I buy all your worthless stock uh, for this extraordinary price? Everyone jumps to the conclusions like, yes, please, please do that. Because it's, it's going to go the seller's way is what they're thinking in their mind. But they have this in, basically in not even insider trading, but just since they have this guru who has made this brilliant prediction, um, they're so confident that they're going to successfully uh, get returns back on their investments that they're doing all these bad deals because it's going to pay off in the future. So that's the best way I can explain it. And there's also some extra emotional, there's an emotional subplot in this with Steve Carell, who basically his character is um, everything about him. He's all about uh, dismantling corruption and trying to point out flaws and sort of, I don't know the exact best words to use it, but he tries to analyze things and do it in a way that goes by his morals, I guess. And the reason he does that is because it's a coping mechanism, because we see a scene of his brother uh, about to jump off a building and commit suicide, so we can assume that happens, and uh, he blames himself for that. So. 
Yeah, it's a wild movie. Uh, overall, so the positives, uh, it's super funny. Uh, this is basically a sitcom, like this is sitcom humor in a full-on blockbuster movie, basically. Uh, so we have sort of a dead dry humor, deadpan camera angles. We have like very slow zoom-ins on people's faces. The camera angles are very funny and they, they add to it. So it is kind of like The Office, right? So this is kind of like The Office just with more swearing and with an R rating. It's R-rated office, essentially. Uh, yeah, so it is a very funny movie. It's very charming. Uh, it's very intellectual, obviously, but it's also, it's not too intellectual. It's not so intellectual that it's gonna, like, completely isolate the audience or it becomes pretentious. It has an equal amount of dumbness, if that makes sense, and it kind of, it, it meets a nice balance. So we'll have, like, really smart jokes that will go over your head, and then we also have an equal amount of dumb jokes that anyone can understand and appreciate. So I felt it was a very good mix between the two. Uh, the all-star cast is awesome. The, there's no weak links really, except for Brad Pitt's two lackeys. I thought they were kind of unnecessary, but still, it, it was still fine. Um, but yeah, the film is very, very strong overall because it's an intriguing, entertaining, well, surprisingly well-paced, genuinely, in, yeah, very, very interesting, uh, story that is covering a real-life historical topic as well, so it has extra significance and impact because of that. Um, as for negatives, well, so here's the thing. It is an intimidating movie. It has a lot of uh, financial jargon and technical terms, but that's actually one more strength of it. The way it handles that is actually super good uh, because it basically throws in these wild card cameo celebrities uh, in fourth wall breaking scenes to explain what these various terms like CDOs and stuff like that mean. Uh, and CDO is basically a paperweight, but I didn't know that before watching this film. So this movie actually taught me something or two. So I also appreciate it for that. But uh, yeah, really, I guess the only negative for me is the, the Brad Pitt uh, trio. I just felt like there were so many characters that the Brad Pitt trio just was one more perspective I didn't really need because at the end of the day, they are they all have the same perspective as each other. It's a story with a bunch of characters all with the same perspective. They're all Wall Street brokers that want to get rich. Uh, so that's going to be my, my last negative. So there's only two. So there's two negatives. The first is the Brad Pitt, the Brad Pitt trio didn't really need to be in here. Uh, and the second and last negative is uh, basically the fact that the story doesn't have anyone that you can root for. So in the sense that it is kind of an adventure film, um, but you don't really necessarily want any of them to win or lose. You know, it's not really a big deal either way, because at the end of the day, they are basically just, I don't want to call them bad people, but they are money hungry, uh, greedy people, right? And uh, they're cussing like a sailor, they're unnecessarily aggressive and hostile towards everyone, um, they're always holding their cards close to their chest, so they're not exactly the greatest people ever, so there's not really anyone to root for. But I'm going to give The Big Short an 8 out of 10 because it's a one-of-a-kind financial dramedy that's genuinely intriguing, has some historical impact, is going to teach you a lesson or two, and most importantly, is very funny and very entertaining. So highly recommend The Big Short. Don't be intimidated by it. I don't know anything about stock markets or broking or anything like that and I was able to mostly understand it and appreciate it a lot, so highly recommend this one.